It's one thing to keep track of one main character as you're writing. What do you do if you're writing a story with multiple points of view? Hey, it's Megan, I'm your writing coach. Welcome back. A couple of fabulous folks requested this video, so here it is, how to outline a story with multiple points of view. So remember, I always say start your writing with a premise. This is a one-line synopsis of basically what your character is going to learn by the end of the story. When you're writing with multiple points of view, you're gonna wanna make a premise for each of your characters. So that's step one, what is each of these characters going to learn by the end of the story? It also helps to figure out how many points of view you're gonna be using. I would say do not overwhelm yourself or your reader by trying to write like 10 points of view. If this is your first time, the key thing to think about is whether or not each of these points of view is contributing something important to the story. You never wanna just add in a point of view for the sake of writing a story with multiple points of view. What is each character's point of view bringing to your reader? And why is it important? So think through how many points of view you want and make sure you have a premise, a general sense for each of those points of view of where they're gonna start and where they're gonna end up by the time the story is done. And then from there, you wanna be thinking about the actual point of view that you're gonna be using for each of these characters. Are you gonna use first person for all of them? Are you gonna use third person for all of them? Are you gonna mix it up a little bit? Whatever you choose, just make sure there's a reason for it. So why are you writing in third person for this character, but first person for this character, etc. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that point of view is consistent throughout each character's arc. As you're continuing to flesh out these characters, it might help to create a character profile so that you can keep track of all their motivations and relationships. Are they gonna interact with one another at all? Are they in the same spaces or not? You wanna think through all of those classic character development elements. Character development elements alongside a timeline of their story. Also try to think about how you're gonna make each of these points of view distinctive. There's no point in writing multiple points of view if all of the points of you sound like the same character. You want to make sure that each point of view, each character is distinct, is clearly their own person, has their own voice. That way your reader doesn't get lost trying to think about, oh wait, who's speaking now? Once you've thought through your characters a little bit more, developed them, you've got a premise for each, then you can start kind of figuring out the outline or the timeline for your story. I always say start an outline in the middle, but it can get kind of tricky when you're working with multiple points of view, so it might be more helpful to start at the beginning. But I still think it's really beneficial to start your outlines for all of these characters with the big picture points and then add more detail. If you try to add all the detail, I mean, it's enough to add detail to one outline without getting overwhelmed, but adding detail to a whole bunch of different stories that are supposed to link together, let's not overwhelm ourselves. Start with the big picture for each. A great way to prep before you start an outline is to create a timeline for all of these stories. So you want them to connect in some way, even if it's just one overarching story that ties them all together. And that's where a timeline can be really helpful. Think of it like the story above your story. Even if the story within your story are taking place in different places, there should be some common theme running through each of them in terms of it's over the same amount of time or it's in the same place, something that can help the reader track. So think through when are these stories taking place? What's the underarching outline that kind of runs through each of them, if that makes sense? Then from there, you can start adding key plot points for each of your points of view. If you're like, I don't even know where to start with adding plot points, it might be helpful to use the classic five act structure. So that means for each point of view, you're thinking through exposition or a catalyst moment where we get to know your character, rising action, that's kind of the bulk of the story where they're gonna face challenges on the way to learning what they need to learn, climax moment or high point, or maybe it's a breaking point for your character where they finally face that thing that they need to learn, and then the falling action that takes us towards the ending or the resolution. So as you work with your multiple points of view, you're gonna think through what's the catalyst for each of these characters. Okay, what are some key moments in the rising action that they're gonna have to work through? What are some stumbling blocks or some challenges that they're gonna face on the way to what they're gonna have to learn? And then what is that for each of the characters? And then thinking through the ending or the resolution, where do I want each of them to end up? So you see how that can kind of get you those big points, just give you a framework, and then from there you can add more detail? That's the goal. Now I would strongly suggest using a spreadsheet or some kind of organizational tool to help you visualize this outside of just your brain. So whether that's writing out a chart on a piece of paper or like a whiteboard, and so you can just draw lines connecting things together, or if you use a spreadsheet and create kind of a timeline in those cells, something that's gonna help you visualize where all these puzzle pieces are fitting together. As you're continuing to flesh out your outline, don't forget to work in scene breaks. This is usually commonly done by giving one point of view a chapter and another point of view the next chapter, but sometimes authors flip from point of view to point of view within chapters, so just make sure it's clear who's talking, where the reader is at, what point of view you're using 
all of that. And along with that, think through your pacing as well. So if one chapter is going towards your first point of view and things are really happening and moving and it's really action packed and it leaves the reader on a cliffhanger, you may wanna start your next chapter a little bit slower to give your reader time to breathe. As we write kind of similar arcs for each of our characters, it can be tempting to keep things at the same pace all the time, but your reader needs to have a little bit of a time to breathe in between all of that as well. Then as you're thinking through the climax for each of your characters, make sure it's not the same for each one. Some characters are gonna definitely gonna have to learn through like a trial by fire method. Some characters may be more reflective and learn in a bit more of a subtle way. Most importantly, you wanna make sure that each of these story elements reflects your character and who they are and how they would learn. Basically, make sure each scene is believable given the character who's at the center of it. Lastly, don't get stuck thinking that you have to make a perfect outline right from the start. Remember, this is why I always say, start with the big picture and add detail because it can be really overwhelming to try to jump in and add in all the details all at once. Read through your basic outline and then add details details and different elements until you feel like all of the stories are woven in together and working. Another tip I'd say is if it's your first time writing multiple point of view, don't bite off too much and try to write like four or five. Maybe start with two, two points of view, and then maybe you could add in a third once you get the hang of how to outline it. Okay, so writing multiple points of view, it's tricky, but if other people can do it, you can do it. I believe in you. If you have more questions, let me know and we can talk about it below or let me know a little bit about the story you're working on. I'd love to hear about it. If this video was helpful for you, it really does help me out if you can like and subscribe. As always though, thanks so much for watching and good luck with writing your multiple point of view story. I'm excited to hear how it turns out. Take care.